oh i just love that intro music it makes it's very relaxing so hello there everyone happy thursday hello everyone that has already popped in hello there ria stacy and badia and thank you so much for sharing if you do share this live stream you are in with a chance of winning a 15 dollars gift certificate to the alta news store the lovely angel is behind the badge today and she will be popping in all of the links and letting me know if I've forgotten any of the questions. So thank you, Angel, for being there. Hello there, everyone that has popped in. Everyone else. Hi, Cece, Lynn, Jean, Karen, Corrine, Zmara, Janet, and Nancy. I think I have everyone that has said hello. So hello, 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 everyone. So it is the 22nd of the month. So that means we do have a new paint flower which was released today. Today we have the very pretty Fashion Manga Dahlia. Now mine doesn't look that very clean. It is well loved. So this is the one that we're going to be using today. And as it's quite wet and sticky and warm today, we are going to be taking it quite easy and we're going to be doing it some water coloring. So hi there everyone. Hey Sue and everyone else that has popped in. Hey there Paula too. So happy Thursday. I'm going to move you guys down so we can take a look at the stamp set a little bit closer and do some water coloring. So I hope that you're all in for a relaxing afternoon or good evening wherever you are. Maybe, you know, maybe grab a drink um, of a nice tea or something and then we can sit down and do some very relaxing watercoloring. So as you can see, I have my set here. So this is the Painter Flower Fashion Manga Dahlia. And it is very pretty. So we have a cluster of three in here. Thank you, Sue. I just love this apron. It's good for popping on over some clothes that maybe it's a bit... Um, not great for live sessions so yeah the apron's great so I have my stamp set and there's some really great sentiments in this one as well oh a small glass of soda I'm glad so keep hydrated okay so in the UK we're not really used to hot days <laughs> in a row so yeah it's pretty sticky and humid at the minute so I have a piece of watercolor cardstock now I am going to be embossing onto this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some anti-static powder now my anti-static powder is just baby powder I use it because it works really well it's pocket friendly and also it smells really good as well and I can also use it on my hand so I don't add any sticky marks anywhere so I have that down hopefully that's nicely prepped and I have my stamp I'm going to be using some mm, there it is I moved it to the other side of my desk for some strange reason so I have some embossing powder so we're going to emboss this on to that piece of cardstock that we have there so I'm just going to ink it all up make sure it's all nicely covered that is the trouble with clear embossing powder. You can't really see it that great until you stamp it. So I'm just going to pop this down in the center. Not sure if it's going to be there on the end card. Because I think I may cut this out. Mm -hmm. Giving it a good squidge. Also, it is good if you use a stamp positioning tool when you are embossing if you do miss anything you can then just go straight in I'm going to be using some platinum embossing powder not my normal choice so I thought I'd go for something a little bit different today and I do love this platinum color so it's kind of a mix between gold and silver maybe a warm silver is the best way to describe it Move that over to the side. Try not to knock that on the floor. And I'm just going to heat set this.
So I'm just going to turn that into the light to make sure that I have everything done. And I just love how magic embossing powder is because it like it comes out one color and then it turns into a different color. So what I would suggest with embossing powder, what I do is I emboss some onto a piece of cardstock that I'm normally going to use it with and then stick that onto the top. So you can see the difference between the melted and also the unmelted. And I think it's a good idea to keep that on top of your embossing powder so you can see at a glance what it's going to look like when it is embossed. Okay, so that is that. Oh, Sue, I'm so glad that your order is on its way. So I have my little um, palette. Now this is the medium palette from Ulta New. And it's one of my favorite things to use. So I used to use like a piece of plastic, but this one is much more sturdy. So that is what I am gonna be using. Um, I then set up my little working area. So I have my um, stamped image on my palette. I have my water. I also have like a little piece of tissue, a wet wipe, um, some kitchen roll up the side too. And then I can add my palette to the other side. Now I'm using the Artist Watercolors from Ulta New. These are my go-to. And before I start, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate my watercolors. And to do that, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spray some water over them. Please let me know what colors you think our fashion mongers should be, or if we should try and do kind of a rainbow effect down them. Please let me know. I will start with the leaves so I can get some suggestions for colors off of you guys. So I do want to stick my panel down to this. But I'm, I'm a little bit frugal with my tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use some water. So I have my flat brush from the round watercolor brushes from Ulta New. And I'm just going to add some clean, clear water to the top. I'm going to flip this over and then go on the bottom too. And then when I flip that back over, this will kind of stick to that. Okay. <laughs> Not always purple, are you sure? Okay, so may, I'm, I'm still debating what colors I'm gonna go. So I am gonna start with the leaves. So I have everything really wet at the minute because I've just added water over. Okay. And then I can just drop the color in. Now I'm gonna mix my own little green. This is my favorite green to mix. So I use the tropical forest and then to kind of pull it back a little bit, I'm just gonna grab a bit of brown and that's gonna work as my shading. So I haven't mixed it all in. I just have it in the corner there. And I'm just gonna drop this color. Ooh, I went over my flower. But it's going to be okay. So I'm just going to drip that in around the flowers. Make sure my brush is nicely cleaned off now. And then I can just add some more clean, clear water in there. And that will just pull that color out. And I'm not going to worry about that. Ooh, fiery, fiery orange or rainbow. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those days where I'm just not sure of myself so okay so I'm going to grab some of that more color and drop that in so does anyone have this on their subscription have they got it already I'd like to know also because it's me doing a live and we know that I'm a little bit nosy with things also, please let me know if you do have any good news. I'm always up for a bit of good news. So if you have any, please let us know. Is it your birthday? Is it your anniversary? Do you have anything that you're celebrating? Please let me know. Oh, close my eyes and hit the puns. Hmm. I reckon we could. 
I'm going to add a bit more brown into there just to add that really dark shadow. Oh, I am going over the flowers a little bit. Okay, let's try and not do, to do that. So I'm going to pull that out a little bit. And it is quite warm, so these bits that I've added the water onto are drying it quite quickly, which isn't normally the case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pull the colour out from here so this is supposed to be a petal so I am gonna have to add a really dark color on there oh, I, I'm used to this brush this is like my favorite and I always go to it I feel like I'm cheating on it if I use another one hmm maybe maybe just maybe I need to okay so let's Let's try a rainbow. I know, I know. I can't help myself. So I'm gonna add some more water in there. And this part up here is gonna be pinky tones. So I'm gonna add the color down. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sue. Oh, she went to the park with her grandson. Oh, it's too cute. It's nice that we can now go out again and spend some time outdoors. I know, you know me. You can't cheat on watercolor brushes, but I feel like he's looking at you in the paint pot asking you what what he's done wrong because you haven't chosen today so I'm gonna go with some orange mm -hmm. do, 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 do. and it's gonna go into this flower too um Beth I'm so glad that your son is getting released so glad everything went okay I'm just going to pull this color out a little bit. This should definitely be a celebration card, I think. Oh, don't touch the green, Lydia. Mm -hmm. I think we'll add some more like details with some pencils so I'm not going to worry too much about things I do want a bit more of a mix here though oh yeah that's what we want and some yellow I'm not going to do a green green because we have a lot of green with the leaves anyway <clears throat> um Beth this one's number four He's my favorite. Okay. So I'm going to take the, my favorite, everyone knows, the Laguni colors. And I add some of those over here. Just added some more water on that. So is everyone loving the fashion manga Dahlia? Do you have it? Do you want it? Yeah, definitely a celebration card, this one, I think. I mean, we do have some sentiments on the set, which we will use. I'm loving this rainbow. I think I need to do this again. <laughs> it's so cool. So I have my that color down. Let's go with the blue. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe everyone does want everything. Yeah. 
and then a wee bit of purple on the end see so we do have purple worry too much about going over these edges because like I said I think I'm gonna cut this out but before I do I am gonna go around the outside I have these little stems okay so it looks so pretty. I'm going to try and let that dry a little bit. And while that's drying, I'm going to create the background. Now, this one is inspired by the lovely Urm, who does watercolor drops all the time. So I am going to add a little bit of a slope. So I've just added some of my ink underneath there. And I'm just going to add some water at the top. I may need a larger slope at the minute, but at the moment, I think we're okay with what we've got. And I'm just adding a clean, clear water. And I'm gonna add black. So it's gonna be quite dramatic when we add a bit of this down. So this one is inspired by Urim, and she kind of holds it up slightly and then it lets these drips go so if you are a little bit worried about things just letting it go maybe trying this technique will help you just let that water go I'm just kind of pulling it down a little bit where I want the drips to go oh Zmara you're making wedding invitation cards that's exciting add some more water in you, what you want is you want it quite wet so the drips do go by themselves. Oops. Maybe pull it up a little bit more, Lydia, so they do move. Okay. I'm trying to add, oops, more larger drips over this side than the other side. You can also make these go a little bit quicker using some heat or like a fan. Come on, come on little drips, you know you want to go. Yeah, sorry, this is watercolor paper. I wouldn't really necessarily do this on normal paper because you won't, it doesn't really want to hold it so much. And this is quite relaxing. We could have definitely done this in rainbow, but as we have rainbow flowers, I thought it's best to probably go with something a little bit not rainbow. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, Noreen's card was amazing. Everyone's on the blog. It's just mm. all of the designers have their own kind of way to do things. Right, my drips are not as good as her. <laughs> but yeah, things are going, things are dripping. We're okay. I may add some splatter to you. Okay, add a bit more black at the top because I did want it a little bit darker at the top. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe that up and add a little bit of splatter as well. So just add the paint to your brush and then just tap it on. And because it's still wet, it's going to kind of move it that way. All right. Okay, I'm hoping we have enough background there. So I'm just going to move 
this over. Oops, I shouldn't have shut that because I did mix a colour. And I'm going to move this over too. So hopefully that will dry. Make sure that my brushes are quite clean because I just pick my brushes up and use them straight away. So that could, with black, it could get a bit messy. And what I want to do is I'm just going to dry this off a little bit. Now, because I don't want the colors to run, I am going to hold my heat tool quite high just to kind of set it a little bit quicker. Hmm. What I forgot to do was add some black around this image. So I'm going to heat set it first, then I'll add a bit of black. Okay, so that's nearly dry. So I do want to add a bit of grey around this. Just so it doesn't look so out of place when I cut this out and then add it onto that background that we've just created. I just love this black. It's just so like inky, like squid ink. And because we have those embossed lines... It should be easier to go around it. Now you could definitely just do this if you wanted to and not add it onto that background. But I would recommend that you do dry off the images first before you go into this because you don't want that black kind of bleeding onto these really vibrant rainbow colors that we have here. Sorry if I go quiet. I am concentrating. Yep, Christine, we emboss this first with some platinum embossing powder. This is the Build a Flower Fashion Manga Dahlia. And then once we've done that, we used the Artist Watercolors <clears throat> to add some rainbow flowers and just some green leaves in there. I'm not going to be cutting out these pieces here, so I am going to paint those grey. Okay, just kind of picking up the colour from down there. I don't want it black black because the background that we just created isn't black black. But yeah, I think this is going to pop quite well. Again, sorry that I go quiet when I'm watercoloring. Oh, I can't help myself. It's just so relaxing. It's just like, huh. Oh. And you will kind of disguise any of the edges if you did go over the edge when you do this technique too, of just going around the outside edge. I normally like doing navy as well. So once I've done that, I'm then gonna heat set it again very quickly just so we can cut this out.
Okay, so I'm back. Hello, everyone that has joined us again. Thank you so much for joining us. <clears throat> and thank you so much for sharing, everyone. If you do share the live stream, again, you are in with a chance of winning a $15 gift certificate to the Alton New Store. So I want to add a little bit more detail to my flowers. And I'm going to be using the woodless watercolors from Alton New. You don't necessarily need to use these as watercolors. I always use these just as they are, as like pencils. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the ru rubelite and I am going to add the rubelite to any petal at the base that has the pink on it. So I'm just doing a couple of kind of flicks outward and this is going to add some depth and shading to the image. I don't know if you can see. I love these little um, woodless watercolors. They are very, very cute and they work really well. So I need an orange next because orange was next. And again, I'm just gonna add this to any of the petals at the base that have the orange on there. Now it doesn't take a lot, it's just a couple of, <coughs> sorry, it's a couple of scribbles. I'm not coloring it perfectly or properly. The yellow one I'm gonna be using is the maple yellow. And I'm gonna add some maple yellow to that flower center there because it, I didn't color it. A green oops, grass field again just add in at that base and you can see that even though we're not really paying that much attention to it <clears throat> it is really adding to the depth just a little scribble here and there just around the base of that now a turquoise color this one is the Volcano Lake. I think I need something a little bit darker. You can always check your color off to the side. And some purple. The purple hasn't really dried that well but okay we're okay but, ooh, just look how cute that is okay so I'm gonna move these out of the way back into a little container I love that it's in its own storage so I don't need to worry about where it is Okay, and then I'm just going to go around this. Now, because we've left that black there, I don't need to go up to the edges, which is my favorite way to fussy cut. I mean, I like fussy cutting, I do, but I don't like it when you have to go right up to <laughs> the image because it takes so much time. As you can see, I'm kind of moving my paper more than I'm moving my scissors. My scissors kind of stay in the same orientation, maybe a little bit of wiggling, but mostly it's the paper moving around that's doing most of the hard work. I love fuzzy cutting. I do. I can't help it. It's one of my favorites. One of my favorite things to do when we're watching TV is to stick, you know, the like the floral washi tape from Altenew onto some cardstock and then fuzzy cut out the images. And then I can use them on all of my different projects. It's one of my favorites. Especially the monochrome washi with the blue flowers on. Oh, that has my heart. 
So I'm nearly there now. I am sorry that this is a little boring. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, those pencils, just adding a little bit with them really does help the image pop out. It really, really does. Really adds a little bit of interest and dimension, especially if, you know, you watercolor quite quickly, like I do. It really does help. Okay. Ah, oh, Joni. Yeah, she's with me. I love fussy cutting. So I have my background now. I'm just going to heat set this because I have a couple of drips that are a bit drippy. <laughs> so I'm just going to heat set this a little bit. Oh, thank you, Christine. Yeah, definitely give it a go. It was inspired by the lovely Erm, because she is a master at the drippy background. So I would definitely check out her um, watercoloring things, because she is awesome. So I'm just trying to figure out where I want this to go. I definitely want it in this corner here. Just the orient orientation I was struggling with. So I have some foam tape. Ah, oh, the Altenew foam tape. Only Altenew could make foam tape backing <laughs> as pretty as this. Yeah, I was going to go white, but I thought, you know what, I wanted to go something a little bit more dramatic. So that's why I went with the platinum embossing powder today. Oh, I do love fuzzy cutting. It makes me very happy. So I'm going to kind of arrange this and I'm thinking it's going there. Okay. Do I cut the edges off or do I leave them hanging? I think I'm going to cut just this one off and leave the leaves. Leave the leaves. A little bit more in there, Lydia. There we go. Okay. Yeah, the pretty spot is hidden, but we still get a bit of it down here. Okay, so when I decide on my sentiments, what I normally do is I keep them on the sheet and then have a play around to see which one is going to fit the best. And I think it's going to be the just a little hello. So that is the one that I'm going to go for there. And then I think we are near enough complete. Okay. I'm going to add that to my block. Grab my obsidian. And then stamp that down there. And at, but at this point, I think I need to add some more splatter. But I want white splatter. But now I've added my sentiment, I need to mask that off. So my favorite little trick with masking stamps is to use the exact stamp. So we've used this one, so we know it's going to fit over perfectly. So when I do add some splatter, it's just going to like sit on the top of that stamp. My, it's my favorite thing to do. Um, so I'm going to go with white. This is the pure white from Alton Newton. <laughs> As you can see, mine's well loved. I'm just going to turn that so I can get it mostly on the flowers. I'm just going to tap some of that off so I don't get quite so large ones. Oh, yes. Serena, 
Yep, the obsidian is my favourite. I'm also going to use some iridescent while we're here. Let's get all the <laughs> get all the sprays out. These ones, like like the white, the black, and the iridescent, are always at my side. Okay, so. I'm just going to give the table a quick wipe. Try and clean off my hand a little bit. So when I remove that, if any of the splatter had gone on there, it would have gone on there. Just clean that off and that's good to go. But there, I don't even want to wipe my hands on my apron. It's too pretty. But there we go. So we have some rainbow florals with watercolor today. I really do hope that you like it. I'm gonna move you guys up now. Oops, wrong button. Okay, so hi there again, everyone. Just move that down. So thank you so much for joining me. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this laid back crafting session with me which doesn't usually happen normally I'm like everywhere but today I thought you know we'll keep it calm <laughs> and we'll do some watercolor in it so I really do hope that you've liked it if you did miss any of it you will be able to catch the, the stream again it will be posted so you can definitely you know have a, a re-watch if you want to it'd be great if you do maybe if you create a card that was inspired by it could you share because we would love to see as well thank you so much for joining me everyone i really do hope that you have a great weekend thank you to the lovely angel for be being behind the badge and popping in all of those links again thank you everyone see you again really really soon Bye bye <laughs>